Thank you. It is four o'clock and we're calling this meeting to order. Members of the public can participate in this meeting by attending in person from room M, from room three at 69 Stony Circle. The public can also view and listen to the meeting via Zoom by visiting https colon forward slash forward slash srcity hyphen org dot zoom dot us forward slash j forward slash eight one seven eight one seven three eight zero nine eight or by calling in via phone dialing eight seven seven eight five three five two five seven or and entering webinar ID 817-8173-8098. And uh, we have a new board member with us here today, Sarah Hart, representing District 1, appointed by Council Member Alvarez. Welcome. Thank you. And can we have a roll call, please? Present at the meeting are Chair Badenford, new member, uh, new board member Hart, board member McKenzie, board member Nareth, board member, or excuse me, vice chair Ridlington, board member Schwartz. Absent are board member Emily Kyle, now Warren, she changed her name, and uh, board member Prindle is also absent. Thank you. So, uh, as members of the public join the meeting in person or via Zoom, You'll be participating as attendees. On Zoom, your microphone will remain muted and your camera will remain off. The city of Santa Rosa is committed to creating a safe and inclusive environment free from disruption, will not tolerate any hateful speech or, act, speech or actions, and we will staff to monitor that everyone is participating respectfully or they'll be removed. If necessary, we will also immediately end the meeting. Okay, item number two. Statement of abstentions by board members. Do we have any abstentions today? None, excellent. Uh, item number three, comments on the agenda. Do we have any comments on the agenda from the board? Um, Sarah? I think this is where I'm supposed to speak. Um, that I have to leave at 5.30 because I didn't realize. I just joined, so I have another. <laughs> Sorry. Very good, thank you. Any other comments? No? Okay, we'll move on to approval of minutes. Do we have a motion to approve? Move to approve the minutes. And a second? No, a second. We have a motion and a second. Any comments on the minutes? Uh, no? Seeing none, all in favor, please, please raise your hands. That's unanimous, thank you. And we'll move on to item number five, public comments on non-agendized matters. Rob, can you explain the comments method? Yes. Here? At each agenda item, the item is presented, the chair will ask the board some comments and then open it up for public comment for in-person attendees. Once the chair is called for public comment, the chair will announce for the public to raise their hand if they wish to speak on specific agenda item. The public will be limited to three minutes in a timer may appear on the screen <laughs> get it otherwise i'll keep it on the watch um uh for this for the public to see so i'll give a countdown uh, if you can't get this to work so. okay thank you so uh for now just comments on any non-agendized matters do we have any comments on non-agendized matters no are there any submitted in writing Yes. They're part of your board packet and they were published today. Okay, we don't read them out? No, okay. Well, then we will move on to item number 6.1, the Active Transportation Plan Working Draft Vision Goals and Final Scope of Work. Serena? That's me. I'm excited to be back, <laughs> actually in person this time, so thanks for letting me present virtually last time. Um, Rob, is there a thing I can do to advance, or should I just tell I you? I can't even actually get the presentation. <laughs> yeah. So, um, if if we want to take a like a ten minute break, I could probably get it to work. I don't know if we want to do that. Me too. We can try to send it to Alyssa. 
we can That's, send yeah, it. I'm waiting for this to reboot. So I'll send the email here and then. No, oh, she can send it to Okay, you can send it to Alyssa's laptop. Send it the sure. Or actually, I might be able to get to you. Hold on a second. Oh, is it in the? Oh, it's in the truck. Tra tra I can get to it. Hold on a second. I'll get it. <laughs> Sorry about the technical difficulties. <laughs> Usually we're a well-oiled machine. Yeah. <laughs> Computers. They look new. Are they <laughs> new? Are we doing the work no? plan or are we doing ATP first? ATP first. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> There's some irony to the fact that now that we're no longer having to accept Zoom comments, we're having technical difficulties. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we're ready. That was much less than 10 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> you undersold yourself. I just promised. Over and over. That's coffee. <laughs> Okay. So our first item will cover the ATP. That is the active transportation plan. Sarah, if you have any questions about things that you've not heard about, you can let us know. Um, I'll fill you in at any point. But um, this presentation is going to be pretty brief. We can do a next slide. All I'm going to talk about is the working draft vision and goals and then the final scope of work. And then we're, we can have a discussion about both of those items. Next slide, starting with vision and goals. Next slide, we're gonna go through this pretty quick. So at the last meeting, we had a request or you know an inquiry on whether or not we know what the draft vision and goals would be for um, Sonoma County Transportation Authority's ATP or the Petaluma ATP. Petaluma, is, as far as I know, is not out yet, but SETA's is. And so I included it in your staff report and on the presentation so that you can have an idea of what they're doing since they're in this process right now. Um, I'll read through the vision and then, you know, the goals are on the staff report, so I won't read all of those. But the vision is the transportation system is safe and inviting for people of all ages and abilities to walk, bike, and roll for everyday transportation and recreation by providing a continuous and interconnected network linking daily activities and housing and supported by programs and policies that encourage walking, biking, and rolling. It's a very long sentence. <laughs> Our guiding principles are to improve safety, equity, and quality of life. And then again, they have three goals related to um, a connected and reliable network, safe and well-maintained network, and then ensuring that their transportation network is community-oriented and place-based. You can go to the next slide. So that's just some background information for you. Um, so this slide shows the working draft vision and goals that we're presenting to you today. At the last meeting, what we heard was you liked essentially what was in our current vision and goals, but you wanted it to be more bold and more visionary and to focus on safety a little bit more than we already did. Um, so I will read all of this out loud so we can just go over it together. Santa Rosa is a city where the active transportation network is robust and accessible to the entire community, regardless of age and ability. To be accessible for all ages and abilities, the active transportation network will be comfortable, convenient, complete, and connected. To achieve an accessible active transportation network, Santa Rosa will increase comfort by designing the network for all ages and abilities, Maintain the existing network and close gaps to establish a complete and connected network that is seamlessly interconnected with public transportation. Prioritize improvements along the high injury network and or in historically disadvantaged communities to factor safety and equity into projects and programs. 
Consider Vision Zero and Safe Routes to School principles in all transportation planning activities. Support a culture of active and transit mode choice by increasing awareness, improved infrastructure and development patterns, implementing incentives and support through programs and citywide initiatives, and reduce VMT and GHG emissions due to behavior shifts that favor active and public transportation. And I neglected to mention that the bullet points that are in bold, um, those are the ones where the, that language is in our existing vision and goals. So I just wanted to demonstrate kind of, you know, what we maintained and then what is um, new language. And another thing I want to mention is that throughout this whole process of, you know, the ATP until adoption, these are going to be considered working draft vision and goals because they can change at any point. So if we learn something down the road that we want to add in or we want to revise a sentence, we're going to be able to do that. This is just to give us kind of like the guidance to the consultant so that they know what direction we're going in. Next slide. I get a quick question. I, I'm not familiar with GHG. Mm -hmm. Greenhouse gas emissions. Oh, um, and then VMT, if you're not familiar. Yes, that one I do know. <laughs> that one I got. There's so many acronyms. It's hard yeah. to know when to, yeah, thank you. <laughs> so I'll go over the final scope of work really quick. We can do next slide. When I presented the draft scope of work to you, there were seven tasks. We did remove one of those tasks. So there's now a total of six and we'll do next slide and I'll explain that to you. Um, th this is a, an overview of the edits that we made. The first one is that we extended the project timeline from 12 months to 16 months. There's a couple reasons for this. Um, one was there was a comment, I can't remember which board member it was from, but one or two meetings ago, there was a question on whether or not we would be able to have a really robust plan in just 12 months. Um, and so we went back to the drawing board and thought a little bit more about it. And what we thought was we're a little bit worried because we have so many people that are really passionate and we want to be sure that we have a plan in the end that everyone feels like they've been able to take their time to go through, provide public comment, and that we can actually address all of those comments and not just be so rushed towards the end that we can't address comments that we receive. So this is going to give more time for review for BPAP, for city staff, for the public. Um, there has been some question on whether or not, um, or worry, I guess I should say, that because it would not be adopted until early 2025 at this point, that we won't get started on a lot of these projects until 2025, which does feel like a really long ways away. Um, and I can understand that that is a concern, but one thing that's great about that timeline is it would get us um, right to the point where our budget cycle is about to go to the city council. And we will also have a list of the projects that will go into the plan several months before the March 2025 adoption. So city staff will be able to ensure that we're programming money for all of the projects that are in that um, ATP as we go into that then budget cycle. Uh, the second edit that we made was we removed what was originally task five, and there were three uh, work products in there. The first one was the 15 minute city analysis. When we looked a little bit closer at the scope, the 15 minute city analysis, and there's the, oh shoot, it's the active trip potential, that one. So those two are very similar to one another. And we felt once we talked with Alta some more, they said that we're gonna get pretty much the same product out of both. So we did remove the 15 minute city analysis. The second was we removed the climate mitigation benefit scenario. This was a task where Alta would have gone through all of our projects and programs that we adopt into the ATP and told us what the GHG reduction would be from those. We think that that is something that could be helpful, but the city's required to do um, uh, updates of their greenhouse gas inventories every couple of years. And so we're still going to see that information um, after the fact as we're starting to implement things. And so we wanted to program the money elsewhere. And then the third thing was active transportation network summary. Once I read this, I was a little confused why they included it because it read exactly the same as a task. I think it was task 2F or something. So I pointed that out and they said, yeah, those were, you know, pretty much identical tasks. So we removed that one. Um, and then the third change that we had was we had them add in one of their optional tasks and that's related to branding and creation of a logo. So branding is something that will be nice for the plan because it's just all gonna look cohesive. But what we're really interested in is having a logo. And the reason we want that logo is so that 
over time, if we start having, when we start having other programming that we use, we want to be able to use that program, that logo. So we want to have a, like a brand identity and a logo within our division so that when we're going to the community, we have, you know, someone will see it and they'll be like, oh, it's that group again. So we're excited about you know, having a logo that we can use and it'll be generic enough so that we can use it for a lot of different initiatives in the future. Next slide. Um, so the next steps is that um, after today and once we receive your comments on the working draft vision and goals, we can make any edits that we need to and then we'll supply those to Alta and um, we're gonna, we're just about to sign the contract and we'll have our kickoff meeting and we'll get going as soon as we can. Um, and then today there's no, there's no action to be taken. There's only providing or receiving your input and then moving forward from there. And I don't have any, there's one more slide, but it's about discussions. <coughs> I'll turn it back. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, so we're gonna take questions from the board and then we're gonna go to public comment. So limit yourself to questions in the first round here from the board, any questions? Yeah, I, I got a question. I'm Alta planning, have we used them before? I'm trying to remember, when, when was that? And they did the last plan. Oh, did they? Mm -hmm. Oh, so we're using. <clears throat> you got to forgive me. My memory is a little funky lately. So, <laughs> thank you. It's not that recent. <laughs> <laughs> was, was it five years ago? Five years, yeah. Okay, well, good. I remember that. <laughs> Any other questions? I, do, I have a question. Um, you're extending the scope of this project. I'm assuming for the final delivery it's from twelve to I think it's twelve to sixteen months. What? is going to be the is there any negative impact because you say you're going to get it in by the 2025 budgeting mm -hmm. cycle does that four months create any losses of you know securing funding or initiating projects or anything like that that people are going to be concerned about yeah it's a great question not necessarily so you know projects that are left over from the 2018 master plan those will go into the atp and we're already aware of them so it's already on our radar that we know that those projects we're going to want to complete and then as a community we know where a lot of our choke points are we know where there's a lot of gaps and improvements that need to be made and so we as staff and then you as the the board and the public who uses our facilities all the time we have a sense of what needs to happen and so we don't have to wait until a plan is adopted to say we're going to start taking action on things. It's it's like you know the work that we do never ends and it's always rolling out. So um, it will be farther down the line that the plan's adopted, but those projects don't just like magically appear in March 2025, right? We know about them throughout the process. Thank you. And then yeah. you can also lean on other plans like the LRSP. That's another mm -hmm. one that we lean on to come up with ideas. Mm -hmm. what, what does that stand for? Uh, local road safety plan. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. you, know, you can find it online. Oh, okay. Hmm. Any other questions from the board? Tanya? Yeah, Tarina, just a question on the climate mitigation um, mm -hmm. part of the scope. Did I hear you say that that, that was um, a task to estimate uh, emission reductions from each of the projects in the plan? Yes. So um, the only question I have around that is, is that information that would be helpful to us in terms of um, both forecasting what the emissions could be from various projects, as well as when um, the city needs to go after grants. You know, there are I've seen grant applications that ask you to provide that information as part of the mm -hmm. grant. So I'm just wondering if, if we're not having this done as part of the plan, will there be another way to mm -hmm. get that? And, and I guess the, the other point would be, would it be helpful to us in, in prioritizing as one of the factors <laughs> that we use to prioritize? The project. Yeah, so. <laughs> that's a good question. Um, most of the grants that I come across don't have that as a requirement, mm -hmm. but I do know that when that requirement is within a grant, we usually have a consultant do that work for yeah. us. And so it would be on a case by case basis if, mm -hmm. a, if a grant requests that we provide that information. Um, and that would be, you know, cheaper than us doing it for every single project yeah. within yeah. the within the ATP. And it gets hard too, you know, when you have yeah. a an action that's about a program, like Safe Routes to School or something like that, that can be pretty hard yeah. to quantify. Um, does that answer all of the questions? Yeah, or is it, it does, okay. yeah. Thank you. I can follow up a little to that. Mm -hmm. I know the TFCA grant, they have like a spreadsheet for you to go through. Yeah. And so a lot of these grants actually have something that you have to go through and do the process mm -hmm. of like- And calculate. Try, trying to do the calculations yourself. So, yeah. You know, and even being able to have that tool because we have that spreadsheet, I feel mm -hmm. like is useful. When we do go for grants, we can try to 
improve things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? From the board? No? I actually have one question as well. Uh, the, these different phases and activities, uh, they all have little times allocated to them. Do you have a calendar of how they line up next to each other? Almost. <laughs> <laughs> so when we got the, the final scope, we did have a calendar that, as far as I know, and since I used to work with a consulting agency, the calendar, when they give it to you, is, you know, it's most comprehensive in terms of, like, telling you how long each task is going to take, but it's really going to be the kickoff meeting with the consultant where we have a, we like look at everything very closely and figure out how all the pieces are going to interline. So at that point, we'll have a much more robust calendar. Um, and I, I mean, I assume I have every intention that that calendar will also get simplified and put on the web page. So that'll be fully accessible at that point. Hmm. Part of the reason I'm asking this is because of the, move from you know, 12 months to 16 months, exactly about a year from now, we'll be looking at budgeting again. So I'm wondering how far along will we be in this plan 12 months from now? Mm -hmm. And how much of the information can we then use yeah. in the budgeting for yeah. the following year? Yeah, I would think at that point, my guess is that we would have a draft plan that is either about to go to the public for review or it's in public for review or we're just wrapping that up. That should be around that same time. Thank you. There are no more questions from the board. We can go to public comment on item 6.1. Do we have some comments? Chris? Uh, Chris with Bikeable Santa Rosa. Welcome, Sarah. Um, everybody else knows me. Um, so uh, just a couple of quick things to say. Uh, appreciate um, the comments, Tarina, because they resolve some of the worries that we had about some of the changes in scope. Um, in particular, on the change of the timing, uh, I've talked to you about that. Yeah. Um, but you know, it's it's especially reassuring if we can continue to. I don't want to say press the gas because that's a bad metaphor. Pedal <laughs> <Metal, laughs> faster. Metal harder <laughs> on accelerating progress in the near term. Um, because obviously our feeling is that we need that step change. We can't allow the planning process to be an excuse to wait for the indefinite future. Um, the um, summary analysis, when I saw that change um, and I read closely the language on that and on the active trip potential, my impression was that the summary analysis was going to offer another layer of conclusions and sort of signposting of critical needs that I wasn't as clear was going to come out of the active trip potential. And so it sounds like you said Alta said, yeah, yeah, they're equivalent, you can do without it. But I just want to double check that there wasn't an opportunity to kind of get sort of more crystallized conclusions as a result of that that summary analysis. And if that's going to come some other way, that's fine. I really, really like the idea of the branding. I think that could be very useful. It's part of what we learned from City Thread is you know part of our ability to communicate effectively and consistently. I'm looking at the Creeks shirt over here to my right and thinking about how effectively uh, their their team uses that. Um, so I think that's a good add. Um, Thanks. And then finally, um, just to echo, you know, my sense on the climate mitigation benefit is it is really useful to be able to forecast. I don't like the idea of sort of looking back and saying, well, I hope, you know, let's see what happened, because obviously it helps with prioritization. Even outside of bike and ped, it might help bring more attention across the city to these efforts as one big lever or vector for incre you know, decreasing our footprint more quickly than other efforts that the city might be investing in. Um, so hopefully that comes out somewhere else, but I, I kind of sense that that could be useful if it was left. Thanks. Thank you, Chris. Any other comments from the public on this item? Which item are you on, sir? 6.1. 6.1. Active, active transportation plan? Yes. Well, I haven't had a chance to actually hear what you spoke about today, but I'm an active transportation guy. My name's Dwayne DeWitt. I'm from Roseland, typically bike riding, 
today driving because it might rain and I could melt. Um, I've come because basically I have felt that this effort that's going forward hasn't reached out into Roseland as well as it could and that the people over in Roseland that are using bicycles aren't as tuned in to this organization or the Sonoma County Bicycle Coalition as well as they could be. There's a uh, effort on that Bicycle Coalition to help with the safe routes to school and reach out to the kids. But basically, most of the folks over there haven't been able to be a part of this effort. And I really think that there should be more outreach to make it even more of a successful plan. That's the key, right? You want it to be successful, not just be something that you talked about. And uh, we have a bike path that runs through our area. It's named after the old parks guy, Joe Rodota. And uh, it hasn't really been getting as much use as it could because there's uh, human obstacles, if you will, people that make it more uncomfortable for riders. Uh, I really hope that you folks will get a chance to perhaps bring this actual item over to Roseland School and have it there and have the people in the community come to you and, and hear what you got going on. Because most of you may not know, but the Roseland Census District is the most disadvantaged in the county. And it's just over there a ways to the east now. And I really believe that uh, more people would ride bikes if they felt safe on the streets but traffic is uh, very dangerous. So we'll leave it at that, and hopefully I can pick up the whole thing later in the day. All the best to you. Thanks, Dwayne. Any other public comment? No, we'll bring it back to the board for discussion then. Any input to share from the board? Oh, Elizabeth. Elizabeth? No. Karina, thank you for all the work that you've put into this, and Alexander and Rob, too, because I like the current product. I'm happy with it. Thank you for explaining the longer timeline. Um, I think I was one of the people who was asking, perhaps, about whether 12 months was going to get us a robust product, and in particular, robust outreach that will make it easier to move forward. So uh, while I see the conflict with budgeting, you've actually helped to alleviate my concerns around that. So I appreciate that. Um, and then as for the things that are coming out of the scope of work, that all seems reasonable. I am skeptical in particular of uh, trying to assess the climate impacts of small projects just because that modeling is hard to do with any kind of precision. So it makes sense not to be spending time and money on that, I think. So that's all I have. Thank you, Elizabeth. Tanya? Yeah, I just had I had some um, comments on the vision and really because we we heard a lot of feedback from community members about the vision. And so I actually took a, uh, uh, made an attempt at adding or making some changes to the vision statement to reflect some of that. And I don't um, you know, I don't necessarily want to get into wordsmithing. I'm sure you don't want to in this <laughs> meeting either. So I'm happy to share, you know, give this to you after the meeting, Tarina. But I guess a couple of things that stood out for me in the feedback that I think would be helpful to incorporate. Um, first, um, the, there were a couple of comments around including um, safety more specifically in the, in the vision and goals. And so I would propose that we include something in that first in the vision statement that talks about the transportation network being safe, comfortable, convenient, complete, et cetera. Um, and then on that first bullet point, it, it, or adding um, safety into the first bullet point, so saying increase safety and comfort um, by designing the network for all ages. And then a couple points down where it re references historically disadvantaged communities. I found that that term is often, people don't understand what that means or who you're referring to. So I thought it would be good to more specifically reference um, Santa Rosa's equity priority areas and or populations as defined in the general plan update. Um, so making a stronger connection there. And then just had a couple other thoughts about how to kind of simplify or shorten some of the, the points. So I will um, share this with you, Tarina, and um, yeah, you can integrate it as, as you will. I, I'm, I'd like to second the, the whole safety thing. Um, as you know, the drum I've been beating lately is, uh, if we want to get more people on bikes, we have to make the streets safer. That's it's, it's it's as simple as that. Almost everybody I talk to that you know, I have a lot of friends that have stopped riding their bikes on the road, you know, because it's too scary. 
Um, and as I mentioned before, I was hit by a car and um, I'm still part of my memory issues are, are from that, unfortunately. Uh, so I am definitely into, you know, making uh, the road safer. And then if you if anyone did see the email comment, uh, it's pretty bad. And that's exactly the people. Um, the guy signs it, kill yourself. OK, so we got to lock people like that up. You know, if you know this, this is great. I mean, if he does something wrong, we got this as evidence. But uh, yeah, and, and just I'll just summarize. Need to make make the road safer. Um, I will say that I've added a flashy light to my daytime riding. <laughs> the 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 uh, you know red flashies are are. I get a little more room from people and a little more respect. It's it, they work. So if you don't have one, use one. <laughs> Thanks, Doug. Any other comments from the board? <clears throat> well, I'll, I'll make a brief comment then. GHDs and vehicle miles traveled. Maybe it's a good idea to spell them out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I got it now. <laughs> yeah, but you would probably not yeah, the only not one. The only one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Can I ask a follow-up question? Yeah. So we've been, or I've been conditioned from our, our um, legal team to try not to use the specific word of safety because it's very vague and it doesn't mean a lot of things. It can mean a lot of things to a lot of people, but it's not specific. So what does safety mean? I mean, that, I mean it, can mean, it can mean a variety of things, right? It can mean being more comfortable. It could be being more more room on the road. It could be, and what's safe to one person isn't necessarily safe to another person. So, are there more? <coughs> is there more specifics behind that that we can include, maybe other than that word? That's kind of just an open question. I I like that. I, I define safety. That's 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 excellent. Well, I felt like it already did in some ways because we've got the reference to the high injury network to vision zero to safe routes to school um and so for me because i'm maybe too steeped in all this i read those and i go oh good this plan has an emphasis on safety so i'm wondering if the for people who haven't spent as much wonky time reading these things what they don't see they don't see the safety that's in here and they want the word safe up in the vision statement because that's and we should, perhaps should consider doing that because it's a way to signal to them that yes we are thinking about safety and then we can very specifically point to the high injury the vision zero um the safe routes to school as the specifics of how we're going to factor in safety yeah I, I i understand the desire to have safety called out explicitly to me when i read comfort Somebody's not going to go out there if they're not they're not going to feel comfortable unless they feel safe. Right. So to me, comfort implies safety, and then you've got the the various programs that involve safe routes to school and that kind of thing. So I think I think it's, I think it's fine, but I and but I understand people who may have been injured or or have otherwise felt really uncomfortable to have safety more explicitly called out. But I, personally, I think it's comfort is a is a pretty good word. I, I would think that. Comfort is different than safety. Yeah. Um, safety is about people actually not getting injured. Well, comfort is you could you could be in a dangerous place and still feel comfortable, or you could be in a safe place and be uncomfortable. Fair enough. You can't really control how people feel. Safety is about making sure people don't get injured. And I feel fine about using the word, especially as Elizabeth said, there are specific things we call out that are about safety. basically outline what what you're going to do to make things safe you know like the, the uh, cycle tracks the buffered bike lanes you know class ones that sort of thing <clears throat> yeah but it uh, might might be the kind of thing that I, I I feel strongly that safe the word safe should be in here several times just to enforce and and message that this is a really important part of our network and that it's something you know, when I talk to people about, well, why aren't you biking? I don't feel safe. I don't feel safe. It's not safe. The roads are dangerous. So 
So yes, <laughs> you can have different interpretations of that word, but I think you could have different interpretations of comfortable, convenient. You know, they are all going to mean different right. things to different people. So, um, but I guess where I was heading with that is that it may be something that as we're out doing community engagement, we start to hear from people, is that really a word that resonates? Or no, there's these other words that they would use to describe their vision of the network. So. And kind of the read them, I mean, and what makes people feel unsafe is really yeah. what I mean. Yeah. People say, "Well, I don't feel safe." Well, why don't you feel safe? Is, yeah. That's kind of where I'm, yeah. I'm going. Is it's, it's a little nebulous, right? Yeah, dude. We want to know how do we make it better for you to feel. Give me a way to, to ride my bike without having to be on a road with cars. Yeah, do yeah. So, right. So that's an answer. Right? <laughs> yeah, do a survey. What what makes you feel safe on? What would make you feel safer on the road? Just simply a question like that, and see see what you get. I think it's important what you're saying because I would agree that many people that I know don't walk or ride bikes because they feel that they're going to get hit by a car. I mean, that's their, I think many people's definition of safety is that, that you don't want to do it because you, I mean, people are surprised when I say places I ride. They're like, oh, my God, I wish I did that. That's crazy. What are you doing? You know? Um, and I think it's that. It's that fear of being hurt. And I think it's this very legitimate fear. Yes, it is. I mean, I was a little surprised at the beginning when it said, we have this robust system. I don't feel like it's that mm. robust. <laughs> At least for me, apparently <laughs> where I go. That's her fault. <laughs> you did. I mean, so it's good. Yep. But it's, you know, I, I think I see people in jerseys writing, but I don't see that many people like me writing to go to the, a grocery store or things like that. It's not necessarily recreational. That's kind of my feeling about it. Good. I will say that I can always find bike parking whenever I'm doing errands on my bike. <laughs> but can you find a bike rack? Uh, yeah, in a few of the places, yeah. Walgreens, you know, and, and, and that's what I'm saying. There's only two or three spots, and it's almost, you know, there might be one other bike there. So it, it goes back to what you're saying. People yeah. need to feel safer to, to do those sort of things. I think it's way easier, you know, even around Santa Rosa, to do my errands on a bike. It's just, it's easier, you know. Safer? Well, I don't know. A car is not that safe either. You know, so. <laughs> I didn't mean to get on a rabbit hole. Sorry. But, <laughs> it feels no, no, safe. No, no, no. I, <laughs> I, I appreciate it. I appreciate that. It That's occurs to me, too, that there's two different audiences here for the word safety. There's the general public reading this and like, well, I can't let my kid ride to school because it doesn't feel safe. And they're going to have a fairly casual definition. But I assume that the city's legal department responds with differently to that and you might even because you're like okay well how am somebody how is somebody going to judge whether i've done something safely and that's you would have complied with standards and best practices and most recent research right. um so somehow we need to this the challenge of this vision statement is to connect the two parts here to, so maybe the word safety needs to be in there because right now I feel like it's speaking more to the engineering side by talking about the high injury network, which we there's a written plan in place sort of for how to deal with some of these things. Uh, anyway, so now I'm envisioning. Here's the vision and goal statement, and then we have an elaborate glossary. For you. <laughs> <laughs> That's not going to increase public engagement. <laughs> One thing that I really enjoy in plans and what I was doing with my last employer was um, throughout the document providing more context for things. And so I, I'm a very strong proponent of like call out boxes all over the place. So maybe like the first place that we mentioned safety, there can be something that like captures our discussion here. Mm -hmm. um, so I, yeah, there's a lot of opportunities for those kind of caveats. Anything else, Rob? No, sorry. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I'm happy to hear that everybody's we're all on the same page as we need to in, increase safety, and that's a big deal. So, I'm and I'm not that. saying we shouldn't. I'm, yeah. I'm, no, I think, <laughs> I, I, th I think you're saying that, yeah, we need safety, but, but we need to define it. Yeah, right. yeah, exactly, yeah. which I think is a impo very important point. Serena, anything else for you? No, I think that gives me all the answers I need. Okay. Thank you. Then we will move on to item 6.2.
uh, fiscal year transportation and public works plan for 2425. That's you again. Yes. Hope you're not sick of me. Um, so the PowerPoint that I have for you is pretty much identical to what I presented to you last time. So when we met in September, um, I gave you a presentation on what we've accomplished this past year, um, you know, what we have in progress, what's already in the pipeline that's going to be done throughout this year, this next fiscal year. Um, and then I also gave you a list of some projects that we, you know, they're in the bike fed master plan or they're in the local road safety plan or they're in some kind of plan, but we haven't really made progress on them. And we asked for the board to give us feedback on how to prioritize those projects. Um, let me see which slide that is. That is slide 11. You want to get to slide 11? Am I right about that? Um, so there is there is action on this item. Um, we're asking that you uh, provide us feedback on how you want us to prioritize projects that are on this list, um, projects that are in attachment two. Okay, so there's two areas where we have a list of projects or plans um, that you can provide input on how you would like us to prioritize, or you can just give us some more general feedback or projects that you have ideas on. So the two sections specifically that I'm thinking about are in attachment one, the last table, it's the studies complete and grant funding needed, because it will be helpful for us to hear from you, um, you know, which of these projects you want us to prioritize when grant funding becomes available. And then in attachment two, it will be the third table, which is conceptual projects identified. And I'll put a reminder that any project that has an asterisk at the end of it is part of the first phase projects that were adopted in the 2018 master plan. Um, so I can go over anything in these attachments if you would like. I can go through the PowerPoint if you would like, but because this is more of a discussion and you're giving us your thoughts on prioritization, I want to give it back to you to let me know what's most helpful for you. Okay, so as usual, we're going to start with seeing if there's any questions uh, from the board before we move on to public comment. So, Elizabeth. I have a long list, so maybe I'll <laughs> break it up. Um, on the conceptual projects, mm -hmm. Would the Brookwood Avenue project be protected, or is that just a painted bike lane? That one I don't know off the top of my head. Rob, I wonder if you do. Sonoma. Uh, those are uh, bike lanes. Okay. This is part of a development that's happening there, yes. <clears throat> okay. Then uh, it seems like there are lots of projects that are awaiting construction, including some that I thought were going to be done by now. Um, <laughs> can you explain your surprise? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Um, one an item that I had under staff announcements is that unfortunately our slurry that was going to happen this year is not happening this year. Um, that was a just an issue with the contractor, and so it's now tentatively scheduled for summer of next year, um, which spring. Spring. Late, late spring. Yeah, it's a huge, way. huge blow. <laughs> we we were sad. It was a bad week. Um, so that is one thing where you know there is a lot of projects on the um, you know awaiting construction list where we will be awaiting. Okay, that explains why that list is so long. Yeah. <laughs> Um, can you explain the difference between the two Fourth Street projects? So under awaiting construction, there's Fourth Street from E to Bryden, which is going to be a road diet and some improved crossings. But then on the grant funding needed, we have Fourth Street from D to Farmers, which is a slightly longer stretch, but it encompasses some of the same things that's in 
forth from E to Bryden. So I was just surprised to see it broken up like this because I don't actually understand the difference. Fourth Street from E to Bryden, that's the <coughs> slurry, right? Yes. Yeah. And I, the D is actually, I think, a misprint. It should be E mm. to Farmers. Okay, but then I thought nothing could happen between Bryden and Farmers, particularly because the traffic volumes are too high. That that is true. We are, but we have, that is part of the slurry project. So the limits of the slurry actually do go to Bryden or go to um, Farmers. I'm sorry, Farmers. So it, okay. So then what? But it's on the. Yeah, it's probably in. It looks like it might be in the ranks. I think it's a double print on accident. Okay. Yeah. Great. I was just confused by that. So that's a bike lane that would go from Brighton to Farmers. A bike lane that would go from. Uh, we're going to do a road diet from Brighton to the west to East Street. Oh, okay. Okay, I'll give somebody else a turn to ask questions while I check off which ones I've asked. Any other? Tanya? Yeah, so on, under the completed studies, um, the Stony Point Road from Guerneville to Sebastopol is marked as complete, and I know the study was done from 3rd Street to Sebastopol, but I don't remember what, what's happening from 3rd Street to Guerneville on Stony Point Road, because that part... I can comment on that. Yeah. So yeah. The, in, in the actual... Um, in the 2018 master plan, the limits were from Guerneville to Sebastopol Road, mm -hmm. identified as a study area, but we truncated that to the most important location because of the fatalities that were occurring between Third Street and Sebastopol. Even though that whole, all of Stony Point is high injury, right? I mean, I thought that whole section was part of the high injury network. I don't know the limits of the high injury network. I know where we, okay. where we know the fatalities were near Occidental and near Sebastopol mm -hmm. and Highway 12. Yeah, so I, I would like to, and, and maybe this is part of the update to the bike ped plan. I mean, I think that whole section of Stony Point needs to be looked at. Um, the section from Third to Grindel. Yeah, yeah, because it is high speed traffic. Um, and thinking about ways to connect, and as we think about connected networks, like how to connect from, um, you know, the, the, you know, the park, which I'm drawing. I can't think of the name of the park. Yeah, Finlay, thank you. You know, to the bike path and just thinking about, you know, there's some real connectivity gaps in that area unless you're a really brave bike rider. Um, and likewise, getting from the creek over to the, you know, new infrastructure that will eventually go in for the part where the study was done. So I think just in terms of connectivity, it would be good to look at that. And I was even thinking earlier today that a lot of the stretch, at least a big piece of that is like city property. So wouldn't it be great if we could convert that to a protected bike lane? I know you can't do the whole thing. Yeah, I'm sure you thought about it. So anyway, um, maybe it's a price something for the plan, but I know. I was thinking about that. So. And then I guess the other question, maybe a request for the future, it would be really helpful because I was starting to try and figure out which of these projects are in the high injury network. And I just didn't have the time to go back and track all of that. So if, in, in the future, if we could have a column that would show which of these projects are in that <laughs> network or in the, you know, when the network gets updated, I think that would be helpful for prioritization. It's my hope. So another one of the reasons that we kind of shifted around that task five was to put more money in the implementation plan section. And so I'm envisioning a table mm -hmm. that has all of our projects and programs, and then it has like a, like tick marks. So yeah. it would say, is it an EPC? Is it on the high yeah, network? Is it, you know, and a whole host of things. Yes, yeah, so that'd be great. That'd be cool. Hopefully when you see this in the future, it's a mm -hmm. little more like you have something more tangible yeah, to actually yeah, look at. That'd be very helpful. Thank you. Any other questions on the board at this point? Dylan? Sure. Um, so under the Jennings Avenue crossing, uh, project and planning, um, so un undergoing conversations with SMART and public utilities, um, kind of been in that for quite a long time. So is there any more potential update or is it still just in yeah, talks? Yeah, I am actually going to a uh, hearing, I think, on the 28th of November. Okay. Okay. Um, and then another one was the school safety pilot projects. Um, then for the description, you got the road diets, bike lanes, crosswalks. Um, so is there any more uh, planning? It seems more kind of theoretical and just an idea right now within like a larger 
um, plan just to improve safety around the schools with changes to infrastructure like that? Mm -hmm. It is relatively conceptual at this point. So um, SCTA, under their Safe House School program, has started a task force, a series of task force meetings. And we've been getting increasing requests for walk audits around schools and things like that. And so we're becoming a little bit more you know, aware of some improvements that could be made. And yeah, it's, it's, I guess, a conceptual general question of, you know, is this something that we want to put higher on the priority list? It will obviously be involved in the ATP process. Um, there are some projects that we're working on internally, and we're hoping to flush those out over time and take them to council so we can at least get a pilot project on the books. Um, so we're hoping within the next year we can work on that. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, well, I just had uh, one question. The um, RCP grant application was due in late September. Did that go in? Yep, September 15th, that went in. So, um, I, you know, one yay that I can give you is, you know, we haven't heard back from that grant yet, but um, one con with us going after grants for projects that we have, you know, that we know we want to do is because we've been really wanting to fund BPOC, the Bicycle Pedestrian Overcrossing. Um, and so the Reconnecting Communities grant and the Safe Streets for All grant, if we were to receive both of those, we would completely fund the BPOC project, which would mean that all grants that come up in the future, we can apply for other projects. So, you know, keep your fingers crossed and send some good vibrations mm -hmm. out for us. That'd be great. <laughs> will do. Okay, there are no other questions. We will go to public comment on item number 6.2, the fiscal year transportation and public works plan for 24-25. Chris? No. You didn't have well, I'm going to raise my hand. Alex? <laughs> Go ahead. Um, hi, everybody. Alexa Forster with Bike Bull Santa Rosa. Um, first of all, thank you for this list. I found it, for whatever reason, more navigable than they have been in the past. So I don't know who cleaned it up, but thank you to all the people involved in that. Um, I just wanted to mention a couple of things. I brought a present for Tarina. Um, this is the like the concept that Bjorn did for the section of Sonoma Avenue between Farmers and Hammond right through Montgomery Village. I don't see that on the list. I see under projects and planning the sidewalk improvements. I've been a little bit disappointed. Montgomery Village has just finished repaving that whole uh, parking lot and the sidewalk is not being improved as part of that. So I don't know what went wrong there, but it seems like it should be their responsibility to finish that sidewalk. Um, and I don't know when it's going to be done, um, but there's a whole plan to do a road diet and turn the right hand lanes into bus bike only lanes. And um, you can see more about it on the BPAB agenda from last year. Um, there's a couple reasons that that's really important. As a parent, if I'm riding with my child and I don't feel safe with them in the bike lane, which I definitely don't on that stretch, I will ask them to ride on the sidewalk. That is not an option anywhere through Montgomery Village. There is no safe crossing for young children, and this is one place that that can be addressed. So I would just like to add the restriping according with that plan to that um, to that section of Sonoma Avenue's Farmers Lane. You know, just the improvement going through there. Um, I think it's going to even get worse because they're opening a Shake Shack there um, any day now. And that's going to bring a lot of teenagers driving big trucks there. So I just wanted to highlight that. Um, the other two things I wanted to say, hi, Sarah. We, we're really happy to see you. We've been trying to make sure that there was a District 1 representative here. Um, there's a couple projects on here in District 1 that I think should be prioritized, that our organization thinks should be prioritized for equity and connectivity reasons. One of them is the Hearn Avenue multi-use path. Um, if we can have that finished near or by the same at the same time as the bridge is finished, then that will actually make that not a bridge to nowhere for bicyclists. It will actually serve to connect people to the smart path. 
And then the other one is Sebastopol Road from Stony Point to Boyd Street. My understanding is that that class four facility has been in there in the bicycle pedestrian master plan since 2018. And I just think that, you know, I agree with Dwayne that the, that, that area has not been, um, there's been under investment in that area. And that is, we recently had a pedestrian death in that area. I just think it's a really um, important place. So if we can elevate that, I would appreciate that. Oh, and one more. Elliott Avenue, do we really have to wait until the bridge is being constructed? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Hi, I'm Ali. Um, I'm actually here because of Chris and Alexa as well. But I, I recently moved to Santa Rosa. I, I commute to work so, with by a bike, so that's kind of why mm -hmm. I'm participating today. Um, I just wanted to echo uh, a lot of what's been said. It, you know, I, don't, I don't have much new to say. I appreciate hearing from all of you. With regards to District 1 and then on Sebastopol Road, I, you know, I don't live there, but I work there. And I know there's a ton of people that work there. And I just want to say from my own personal experience, a lot of what's been told about like uh, safety and, and what that actually means with regards to um, creating that bicycle infrastructure, particularly like class four bike lanes in that area. Like for me personally, that was, I, I've kind of like almost, I don't want to say it this way, but twisted my wife's arm to be like, yeah, I mean, I can like, I should be allowed to bike here. But I think there's a lot of people in my workplace in particular that if you could get buffered bike lanes in an area like that, that would, it wouldn't just be for residents. It's something that I think would be particularly helpful for a lot of people commuting around there. Because there is, you know, truth be told, kind of a cool infrastructure as someone that's relatively new to the area with like uh, the Redota Trail and the Creek Trail and kind of these uh, non-car areas that you can kind of get around on. So. Thank you. He's next. Chris? Evelyn's next. Oh, Evelyn. <laughs> oh, you are oh, behind the... <laughs> Hi, Emily Sharton um, with the Santa County Bicycle Coalition. Um, I just have a couple of, kind of I guess, general questions um, based on um, based on some of the other things that have been brought up already. Um, I'm curious, I guess, um, with regard to the conceptual projects, um, how they're going to be reconsidered in light of the active transportation plan. Um, I know there are a couple listed on there uh, that involve class two lanes um, in pretty busy areas. And as we've already heard tonight, there's you know a lot of discussion around safety and the importance of, of really protected you know class four lanes. Um, so just curious if you know that's going to be part of the discussion um, you know even before um, before the active transportation plan is finalized. Um, and then just second on the projects that are awaiting construction, um, I guess first of all I'm curious you know what what if anything the city can do to kind of ensure that those projects happen uh, in a more timely way. Um, and then also just how that's going to affect um, the ability to the ability to take on more projects next year. Um, looks like the workload might already pr be pretty pretty full if a lot of those projects are just going to be moved to next year. So, just curious how that's going to how that's going to work with the new priorities. Thank you, Emily. Chris, um, picking up on the thread around how how do we prioritize? So when these lists have come up in the past. And including this year, I, I agree the list has been improved, but I struggled with, okay, how do I make sense of this? How do I start to compare these projects? So huge um, applause for the idea of characterizing the projects more in the list. I even really liked on the existing projects, the addition of the mileage um, figures. And I thought if we had that on these proposed ones, that would be a really nice add. But for the board as well, you know, when thinking about how to prioritize these things, I just thought it would be useful to throw out some criteria that I think could be useful. So we've talked about equity priority areas. We've talked about the high injury network. I think we've talked indirectly about just the quality of the facilities, so class four versus class two. I think really, really important from our perspective is just network impact which I think you can think about in a number of ways. So one of them is just the extent. So how long is the facility? Um, how wide you know, might the facility be? So that comes back to quality a little bit. Um, connecting existing segments of the network. So having some sense of like, oh wow, that would be a powerful way to connect this and that, which would open up possibilities for the existing network. Connection to key destinations, so school, shopping, et cetera. <coughs> And then proximity to the core. So we've had a lot of conversation about how 
the investments we make closer in probably have more impact because people can ride through on their way to other places. Things we do on the periphery affects a smaller group of people. Now maybe it could still have a big impact because it's maybe something that a lot of people want to access. But I still think in general as a principle, being close to the core is really valuable. Um, in addition, there's things around obviously cost, impact on staff capacity, um, time to implement. On that, I'm really interested in whether there could be some indication in the future about where there's potential to do quick build. Or I would even like to see some of these projects considered as temporary and pilot sort of projects, like we're talking about that on the steel lane thing. But like Sebastopol Road, what if in six months we put up a temporary protected bike lane and road diet and we said this is going to be here for a year and we're going to see how people react to it and then we can have a real conversation instead of everybody speculating about it's this or it's that. You know, how, how much more engaging would that be for the community and a good practice to move things forward. And then the last, uh, last thing I'll say is just on um, the, some of the specific projects. So I mentioned Sebastopol. I just wanted to add that the Montgomery Village you know, transit through the mall or through the, through the shopping center is like the pinch point and gateway between downtown and everything east, including all of Bennett Valley, Rincon Valley. And so I, th I, I think somebody at some point said there were numbers on this, but I think that's one of like the highest traffic routes yeah, in the whole city. Like yeah. And so that to me would be game changing. Um, similarly on, and I think Emily, you said this on Dutton and Steel class two lanes. I had an old work colleague who said that doesn't pass the red face test. <laughs> And so I think, I know that those are high traffic areas. There's a lot of volume through there. It's not easy to just do a road diet, but I think we need to be serious about, we can't build class two in places that are not safe. We need to either figure out how to build the right thing or build an alternative and be serious about what that looks like. Thanks. Thank you, Chris. Dwayne? Excellent comments on the part of everybody here today. I came to clear up a misconception and I hope you'll pay attention to the specifics of this. On attachment two page has Roseland Creek Trail from Burbank Avenue to McMinn Avenue. It states going active conversations. Those conversations don't involve any bike riders that I know or anybody that I have any connection to in this general area. Most of you probably don't know that that property was bought by the city of Santa Rosa, utilizing tax funds from Sonoma County Agricultural Preservation Open Space District a full 12 years ago. And at the time, Mayor, uh, no, it was City Council Member Gary Wysocki brought community members in to speak with then uh, Assistant City Manager and Director of Recreation and Parks, Mark Richardson, why that property was needed. And he said it was specifically for this bike path. And people out there were like, well, we've only been trying to save the oak woodland to the north of the creek. Why do you have to have this? He was like, oh, we got to have that because we're going to have a, right, a nice big park. He said, we'll make it a community park, 40 acres. People didn't really want to support this. But finally, Mr. Wysocki, in his kindness, said, well, yeah, we're going to make sure and get a community park out there. So the land was bought and nothing's been done to it except tear down the very expensive three bedroom house that was on it. The community has been rallying for years about, hey, you know, what are you going to do here? And they're now using the canard that it's because you've asked for an environmental impact report and that environmental impact report is slowing everything up. Wait a second here, folks. People are just saying out there, do the best you can on these projects to not harm what bit of nature we have left out there. Environmental impact <clears throat> reports can make things better. In this case, the bike path could be put in. It's the stuff to the north that they want to do now that has been the holdup. So I would ask this committee to get actively involved in our community out there to find out what's going on in the sense of getting the bike path on the south side of Roseland Creek that was promised 12 years ago to actually occur. And if they're moving it to the north, then tell us 
why and what's going to happen there. We realize much must be done in secrecy for the environmental impact report, but by the same token as bicyclists, you don't need to pave everything. On the page just before this Roseland Creek Trail from Stony Point Road to Burbank Avenue, they're needing the funding to install a paved section of the pathway. All over Europe, you can ride all kinds of pathways that aren't paved. It's like you don't need to have asphalt everywhere you want to ride a bike. So I'm looking at you folks as being the advocates for us out there as bicycle riders to get this thing going without asphalt and concrete and make it happen. It seems reasonable to me, but I realize I'm not paid on staff anywhere. So one person told me once, well, you're not paid, so we can't yeah, listen to you. Seconds, <laughs> We've got 15 seconds. Hey, we'll cut it there. Okay. <laughs> you know I want to be on time. Thank you. Thank you, Dwayne. Thank you. Anyone else? No. Well, um, you got some comments back on some of the comments? Yes, I and do. I have another question that I should have asked back in the question phase before I get to. Well, let's 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 <laughs> okay. get this, and we'll take your question. So, okay. Montgomery Village. I remember I was looking at that. What's what's going on? That's that's happening. <laughs> okay. So we, we are we we have a project to um, I think do something very similar, if not what Bjorn had suggested, and maybe Alexander did. Follow up on that design, yeah. yeah. Um, including adding the sidewalks on um, the north side and the gap on the south side. So it was just accidentally omitted from the list. It's it's on here, it's but it's in it, here, but it just says it just sidewalks, says sidewalks. Okay. improvements okay. under design. Okay. Yes, it yes. Is. So okay. maybe we just need to clarify that. Yeah. yeah. It's like I was thinking that the whole time you were saying stuff, <laughs> but I'm like, oh, you gotta have let everybody say their piece, right? Now. So yeah, so that that is a project we have. Um, there. Uh, what was the other one I was going to comment on? Emily, what did you mention? I'm sorry. She had two. So the first one was how the conceptual projects um, get considered, you know, with the ATP process happening, and that I mean they get included. So I I don't think anything on the conceptual list necessarily goes away. I think all of it does get included in the ATP. And then with guidance from you, we just know internally, you know, as resources become available or grants come up, we would know, um, you know, can we hop on something now or do we put it in the ATP? Do you have anything else to add? No. Um, and then the second one, uh, with projects that are awaiting construction, can the city ensure that they happen in a timely manner? You try to. And how does it affect your workload? Yeah, it it affects the workload. <laughs> it, it does. So I think, you know, because we, we set which roads will have pavement preventative measures a couple of years in advance, and so we already know which ones we want to do next year, and um, we're still planning as if that's going to happen internally. So we're still talking about like design and what could it look like and how could we put some bike facilities on them. But yeah, it's going to come up to once we get closer to if we can. And, and from our standpoint, if we know the locations that they're planning to do different road projects, that's not stopping us from looking at them and doing the design side of it. it they're, the funding, though, may be delayed in those projects moving forward. But as far as the the concept review, we're, st we're, we're still doing that. Okay, Elizabeth? Yes, so I should have asked a clarifying question before about projects awaiting construction. You explained that the contractor has put off the slurry till the spring and that affects the bicycle projects. But I had thought that the pedestrian projects, which are all RRFBs, I thought that was being done by city crews. We are, yes. Okay, so are those going to happen sometime sooner than next spring? Yes, yeah, we have a couple, a couple more um, on deck to move forward with, and then there's some that we have to do curb ramps for, and those are going to get pushed out a little bit longer because they're a little bit more involved. But we do have, I think, three of the, the next locations kind of lined up that don't need the curb ramp improvements. Okay. So we have a very limited concrete crew that's doing it <coughs> now on some ADA work at Franklin Park. So yes, I've seen that. I walked on it this morning. Thank you. It was very nice. They're tied, they're tied up doing that right now. Okay. So. Okay, so uh, comments on prioritization, prioritization from the board. Anybody want to start us off? No? 
Well, I think, oh. go Dylan. Go <laughs> Dylan. Uh, yeah, I, I think, I mean, there's there's a lot of variables, but yeah, the, the connectivity uh, to the network as a whole, um, kind of destinations, a lot of just like this. Uh, um, I think, you know, I see some class three projects on here, which are definitely, I would say the lowest priority, um, or unless something be done to make those class threes better, like more traffic calming. Um, I'm not sure about advisory bike lanes either. I know those are also contentious, but uh, against a, a class three. Um, but schools as well, um, and hawks. Um, I've seen hawks being used, um, and people don't necessarily use them correctly, but they are stopped, so they work in, in that regard. Um, so yeah, I think class fours, um, hawks, schools, and other big locations are kind of top priorities to me. Elizabeth, you want to go again? Sure. All right, let's see. Um, so I had a comment first just on how the list is presented. Like Chris, I somehow found this easier, list easier to navigate. I think the additional detail helped me because it sort of jogged my memory for what these projects were. <laughs> um, but Minona Hevelin shared with the board members and some staff some comments, and she included maps, which I found mildly inscrutable. But they also reminded me of the usefulness of looking at this from a connectivity and network approach because it was just so much easier to visualize in those maps. I'm like, oh, yeah, if you just fix those two blocks, it opens up a lot more. I think it might be asking too much to be able to have that incorporated in the list here, but I would hope that coming out of the updated ATP, we would have a map and maybe we could look at the pro these project proposed projects on a map because that would make my make some of the prioritization easier. <clears throat> um, so that was my first general comment. Then, um, and that sort of echoes something that Chris said as well, talking about prioritizing projects that connect segments and help build the network. Um, then I, I echo what Dylan and Emily have been saying about let's. Let's do high impact projects, not just more paint on streets. So I'm inclined to deprioritize those. And I would also hope we would see less of those going forward in the next ATP. So it seems like maybe the ATP will affect this list in that regard. As for the specific projects listed in attachment two under the conceptual project lists, the one that jumped out me, well, there are two that I was most interested in. I want school projects. I think those are important because I would like to see children not get hit on the way to school. But I also think that people are going to, that we're going to receive the greatest public acceptance or traffic calming measures and changes around school because that is clearly a population that needs that level of protection. And I think strategically it might be wise to do some school projects for that reason. Um, and then the second project that I'd really like to see something significant happen on is on Sebastopol Road from Stony Point to Boyd. Because it seems to me that too many times in recent years, the Joe Redota Trail has been closed for reasons beyond the city's control. It's up to the county. And yet there is not a really good alternative for people to get through. And we've been pretending that the Joe Redota situation is temporary, and yet it's been temporary repeatedly. So it seems like Sebastopol Road needs to be turned into more of a viable, safe alternative for people to get places. The other thing that occurs to me about the Joe Redota Trail is when you're on the trail, it's great for going through. It's like being on a freeway, though, with no exits. You can't actually access the shops and services on Sebastopol Road. And to do that on a bike right now, you're sort of taking your life in your hands. So I would love to see protected bike lanes. Um, can we get not just a paint buffer bike lane, but can we, we actually get bollards on Sebastopol Road? There's a lot of riders who are not riders by choice who are on Sebastopol Road, and I'd love to be able to serve them better. And then, as Ollie mentioned, it sounds like there are potential riders of choice who would be out there if they felt safer. So I think I'd, that seems like it would be high visibility, high impact. So I vote for schools and Sebastopol Road. And I think that's the extent of my comments. 
Thank you, Elizabeth. Anybody else? <clears throat> Tanya? Yeah, so I, I would second Elizabeth's um, comments about schools and Festival Road and would add to that. I mean, I know it's already on the list. The um, We had the study for the Stony Point, the section of Stony Point from third to Sebastopol Road and really keeping that as a high priority when funding is available to get that project done. And then, of course, I would advocate for doing a study or, or making sure that we're addressing the rest of Stony Point. Um, and just a general observation, and I know this is not like a scientific adding up miles of infrastructure added, but I did go through and just count the number of projects in each district. Um, and this might be something that we wanna look at more in the future as well. And there are districts that have quite a few more projects listed than others, like the seventh district where I live, um, is one of the ones with the fewest number of projects. And maybe that's appropriate per the comments about the more infrastructure we build in the center of the city, the easier it will be for people to get around. But I just think in the future, that's also something that we should be thinking about um, in terms of the geographic distribution and, and you know impact on the equity priority communities as well. So. Thank you. Well. If there's nobody else, uh, then I'll add a few comments too. Uh, mostly echoing other people actually. Uh, Tanya, I completely agree about Stony Point. I think that the other part of Stony Point study is in the <clears throat> master plan right now, as far as I recall. Uh, but yeah, that should be, definitely be a priority. I know we got turned down for some money for that before, but let's see if we can get that done. Um, I'll agree with Alexa about her and getting that time properly with the bridge uh, overpass, that'd be fantastic if we can manage that. Uh, and on Sebastopol Road, um, one thing that uh, Chris said about close to the core, I think it's a really good concept and it uh, ties in with what uh, Ali was saying too. I live in the Sevens as well. If I go into the city, well, I can take the Joe Rodeo Trail or I can do Sebastopol Road. Recently, actually, I went in, I took the trail into the city and Sebastopol Road back. Um, there are positives and negatives on both of those. <laughs> um, so yes, there's definitely some improvement there. And I think that's an interesting concept uh, close to the center, uh, benefiting more people, even though you know, we are a few of us here live, live in the seventh. So um, let's see. Then uh, there's North Dutton. I think that could be a really important one as well, as well as the Roseland Creek Trail. I think those are all the ones I had. Did I inspire anybody else to make a comment? No? Well, I agree yeah. with the thing about the Joe Redota Trail as feeling, because even when it's cleared out, like I don't usually feel comfortable riding on it by myself. Um, whereas I feel would, if there were good bike lanes, I feel very comfortable riding on Sebastopol Road because I live in the fourth, but I go through and then go to go Sebastopol Road from where I live through the downtown. Like that would connect if we had connectivity all the way around. I think uh, there's more reason for people than to go out to Roseland also. Um, seems good. Thank you. I had meant to say this earlier, but I'd lost sight of it. I see that Range Avenue is on here from Russell to West Steel, and then also Cleveland Corridor improvements. And those would be parallel sections. So it seems like in terms of prioritization, if we're going to do one, then the other drops in priority. Just thinking about a way to give people an option to get from point A to point B through that part of town. Hmm. That was a, yeah. <laughs> Do you have thoughts on like yeah. which you would prioritize? Because we were debating. Yeah, so <laughs> we have a different phrase. In my so. mind, I was like, Cleveland gets you to more goods and services, whereas range doesn't as much. It's more in the neighborhood. So it's more in the neighborhood, and I let's see. But it's a slower street, so it's like more comfortable. So you're like. Ooh. Right. Yeah. Yeah, there's trees and yeah. less driveways, right? Yeah. So I was thinking, but the right. cars go flying on range. The, I'd say people drive 40 miles an hour yeah. on range <coughs> north of super wide because it's right because it's super wide north of steel. Um, and we would, I don't know, the striping there to, to accommodate uh, right their bike lanes there now, but we have to, accom to accommodate protected bike lanes and we have to yeah. narrow things down. 
Yeah, I don't know. I see people riding on Russell now. I, for the most part, don't see people even trying to ride on Cleveland. It's because there's no bike lane. Yeah. 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 Well, because so you'd like, be completely you taking your yeah. life in your hand. I'm, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm saying you don't know until there's something there. Right. Like I think. But it is way, my personal dream to be able to ride my bike to Trader Joe's one day. And, <laughs> and if there's a bike, if there's an crossing, then I would take Cleveland up. That would yeah. potentially get me there. Yeah. yeah. Which my Tom, I have a comment that's neither here nor there, but. Uh, I was fantasizing about the public comment process for the master plan and for the ATP being to ask people where they wish they could ride their bike, mm -hmm. like, and just to draw the routes, because yeah, to me great. that reveals the weaknesses. And I was trying to do that exercise here, thinking about which to prioritize. And I'm like, oh, I can't get to that address on West College because I can't get over the freeway, mm -hmm. and then those last two blocks on College trip me up. But I don't know. That was one way to think about this. If we could, and if there were a way to actually get people to actively draw on a map, that might tell us about I, where we need improvements. I, I do like the idea of, of a map, you know, because then you can really see and, and like close the gaps and stuff like that. And that it's not a bad idea to say, well, this is how I would get to such and such, you know, if this gap were closed and this gap were closed, I could ride from here to there. And, uh, you know, like I said, I, I, um, I prefer to prefer to ride than drive. Anyway, I hate driving anymore. I'll, I'll say that <laughs> people are crazy out there. Um, so, so yeah, the the map idea is great, and just list all the projects. And if I could see it on a map, that would be much better for me because I have a I'm having a hard time anymore. Part of my cognitive issues is is that I I'm um, uh, uh, I get lost easy. Let's put it that way, and I can't remember streets. I go on rides that I've go on for a long. I've been doing for a long time, and you know, but I haven't done it in a while. I'm like, I can't remember where I go on this ride, and I, I can't remember. I said, well, just keep riding, and you'll remember when you get there. And thank God I do. You know, I get. Oh yeah, I turn here and turn here and go there. Okay, it's fine. But um, anyway, looking at a map so I could see where all the projects are and where the gaps are it would really help me, you know, put in my two cents on what uh, what I would prioritize. But I, I, I think having it, you know, riding along and having your bike lane end in, in a busy intersection is it's just no fun. It's that's got to That's got to stop. And I do like. Um, I, I think there's been some talk about making the, the the creek trails a little bit more accessible. I'm okay with the dirt ones too. And uh, but man, riding on the creek trails rather than the road, oh man, it's it's a joy. It really is. So make sure those get thrown in there in your. <laughs> you know, A to B plans. Dylan? Uh, yeah, so kind of off what Doug said and kind of more about ATP. Um, so I know there's a project uh, map now on the bike website. Um, and I don't know if it's possible now or will be with um, this next ATP, but some of the metrics that we brought up, like the high injury network, um, could those just be like JS layers that were done overlay? Um, along with the projects, with the current uh, map and all that. Yeah, we've already kind of talked about that. To try, okay. Yeah. To try to like figure out adding that layer. Okay, cool. All right, yeah. so, so it's in the works. With that map, we had a little bit of an issue because we have to do that internally. Mm -hmm. And we're limited in what kind of things like ArcGIS Online lets us do. Mm -hmm. So we can add any of those layers. But then what happens is the map no longer becomes intuitive. And you have to know the exact specific sequence of buttons to click. Mm -hmm. And we don't have a spot. Like the map won't let you put a call out. Like some companies can put like a call out and yeah. say, hey, if you want to find this, go this way. We're not allowed to do that in this program. Hmm. <laughs> so we're kind of trying to figure out, like, is there something within the ATP process that can help us? We will have maps that do that in the ATP. We'll have, a, like, a long series of maps that will help you contextualize projects. Mm -hmm. um, we're trying to figure out if we can do it live on the website. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so potential more possible. Could it say um, yeah. that's, like, some of the... Um, what they provide will be in like vectors, so I assume that yeah. might add somewhere around that. Yes. Okay. I hope so. Okay. 
Okay, if there are no other comments, Torina, do you have what you need? Do you have any follow-up questions? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you. I could offer you some assistance. Basketball Road was my paper route as a boy. <laughs> <laughs> all the way from Point to Olive Street. So I know how to write it safely. Yeah. So we'll move on to item number seven. Chair and board member announcements. Excuse me, Chair. There is a motion on item three point two. Oh yeah. Thank you. Um, do we have someone who wants to make a motion for us on item six point two? To you want the approval of this uh, plan with the comments given? Is that uh, the motion you were looking for? Uh, yeah, the board may by motion accept the draft fiscal year 24-25 TBW work plan. Yeah, and you can add with the comments that were provided. Okay, I'm happy to move. Okay. That we accept the draft fiscal year 24-25 work plan with the feedback we have provided about prioritization. Yeah. Thank you, Elizabeth. I'll second that, yeah. Second from Doug. Any comments on that before we move to a vote? Okay, all in favor, please raise your hands. Unanimous. Thank you for keeping us in business here. <laughs> yeah, good work. Yeah. Thank you. So with that, we'll move on to item number seven, chair and board member announcements. Um, can I put you on the spot? Tell us a little bit about what brought you here to us. Okay. Um, and yourself? Uh, okay, so my name is Sarah. I um, was a high school teacher for 25 years, I guess, in at Windsor High School. I retired two years ago. Um, I've all, we, I lived near downtown Santa Rosa, and part of the reason we moved there was the only house I've ever owned was so that we could walk everywhere and yeah. bike everywhere. And, um, and it's been really good. And since I've retired, um, I've become more and more interested um, because I have more time and I'm out during the day in biking and, and walking. And um, I, I realized that there's a lot of unsafe places. <laughs> you know, I try to ride some, you know, suddenly I'm like you were talking about the bike lanes here in Montgomery and suddenly so, um, but anyway, uh, I was really interested in, in climate change action. I worked a lot at Windsor High School there with a group of students on trying to make changes. Um, very challenging, <laughs> very challenging, little bits and pieces. Yeah. Um, I have two daughters who, sadly for me, live in New York City. Um, but they don't own cars, so that's a good thing. <laughs> but... Um, yeah, uh, I don't know. My husband also was a teacher at the same high school, same amount of time, 25 years. Wow. And uh, we're enjoying retirement and just trying to get involved as much as possible in our community. Um, we're involved in a lot of volunteer work in the community. I, I work a lot with land paths. This is a real passion of mine. Um, outdoor education and climate action and just being outside. It's really nice. So that's a little bit about me. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> yeah, I'm Thank you. excited to become yeah. a part of it. Any other announcements from the board? Elizabeth? Yes, I was going to give an, I have two things. The first is I attended the September countywide bicycle and pedestrian advisory committee meeting with Alexander. Um, I I think I have one more to go at the end of this month. And then remember in January, it'll be somebody else's opportunity. <laughs> um, the meeting was pretty straightforward. We talked about uh, the Caltrans bike plan update, which they just wanted some feedback on. And I don't think we had any feedback. Yeah, I mean, so the other thing is we, there's a survey online that you can take. Mm -hmm. And then also you can map out like where you see infrastructure on their facilities that did have improved. So like today I went through and all the crossings, I just added class fours everywhere, right? Yeah. <laughs> so um, the more people that input or add to that, I think the better um, because there's more.
emphasis then, right, on right. helping new infrastructure there. And then, like, the other thing to that was, like, okay, well, if we have Caltrans change their facilities, then pressure on us to actually mm. connect those facilities, right? That was just my thought. Okay. And then, did you already share that link with the board? I feel like you did right after the September meeting, but perhaps you should reshare it now that you have inspired people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, okay. the, the link, you said? Well, the link to the survey. survey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I can resend it out yeah. to everybody. Why don't you resend it? Saying? Yep. I was like, how do I get it out there right now? To no, no. Here. After the meeting, <laughs> sometime next week. Um, yeah, okay. I'll reshare it. Um, then we got an update on the vision and goals in the counties after transportation plan, which you saw earlier in this meeting. We then we just feel, did some housekeeping stuff on complete streets checklists for various projects that are not within Santa Rosa. Um, and then did the usual updates on key projects happening in different jurisdictions around the county. And I feel like that, that's the extent of my recollection and looking at the agenda, what I jumped out at me. Thank you, Elizabeth. Yep. Oh, okay. So that was one thing. The second thing is, I um, was just in general want to encourage folks on this board to reach out to their council members. I think it's really valuable to keep them in the loop. Just let them know. We, for example, we've started a new active to the update to the active transportation plan, or you could share that <coughs> we've approved a draft work plan that might include X, Y, Z projects in their district. I think that that's really valuable for building public support for those projects. And maybe it also can help flag potential problems early, such as Tanya <coughs> noted, where there's only one project in District 7. Um, or it may, may also enable us to just use those council members who perhaps have emails that they send out to their constituents to let them know about upcoming projects or opportunities to weigh in on the Caltrans map or whatever it is. Um, <coughs> And then the other thing, though, is it may also you may also be able to have a conversation in which something comes out, which I think happened at a council meeting, maybe on Vision Zero, Rob, I can't remember, in which the council members expressed a desire to be fixing safety problems around the city, regardless of what district, district it was happening in. So it may also be that that potential problems are non problems, but it's just useful to continue that dialogue. So this is just a plea that I make periodically to reach out to your council member. Thank you, Elizabeth. Any other board announcements? Okay. Well, I attended the um, mayor's and committee chair's meeting here earlier this month, I think it was, and uh, got some interest from the other uh, boards and committees on being involved in the action transportation plan specifically the waterways uh, people yes we've heard <laughs> <laughs> i'm very excited <laughs> yes so i just wanted to mention that uh other than that i don't think there was a lot that uh, was relevant to us okay so if there's i'd like to make a comment on these matters uh the Tom brown act there i don't believe we have comments on these items here According to the Brown Act in the state of California, anything on the agenda can be spoken about <clears throat> by members of the public. So I make that request, please. Yeah, any other comments from the board? Okay, Wayne, go ahead. Yes, um, it was nice to hear Ms. Hart and her presentation, and then Ms. Ridlington also. I would ask that you also reach out to the public it's, it's something that I've been talking about every since I first came to these meetings decades ago, is that it almost operates behind closed doors and that people don't really know what's happening until after something is begun. And then once it's begun, it's like, well, how did that get started? So it's really a good situation to have some sort of liaison with community members in, in your districts. I don't know if you're appointed by districts now, but uh, if that's the case, I think it would be a really good idea for each of you that has a district appointment to have a meeting within your district with not just bicycle riders, but with parents of children and with the drivers. Um, it's been mentioned by other people, not myself. It's really dangerous to ride bicycles. Santa Rosa now, much more so than when I was a boy. 
And it's especially dangerous right around here where there's memorials for three dead people right here in this general area. So I, I really think you folks can be that uh, tip of the, um, I don't like to use weapons as references, the tip of the positive outlook okay? and, and bringing good things forward with our community that it's okay to be a bike rider and people shouldn't look at us like we're holding up their progress on in the roadway, stuff like that. I've seen some really dangerous things happening still just recently coming over here. I, I salute all of you as volunteers and the paid staff also. Some of you have known me a while. It's um, the kind of thing where building the separated bicycle lane on Armory Drive looks good, but I have never seen a bicycle rider on it yet. Mm. And I go down there all the time. And that new JC housing that's been built, there's only one bike parked in that rack ever. And nobody rides a bicycle to that housing. So there's a disconnect between what we're talking about and planning and what's actually happening out there in the community. You folks could be the ones that cure that disconnect. And thank you for all your time. Thank you, Dwayne. My pleasure to be here. Any other comments? Okay, we'll go to staff announcements. Wait, sorry, one more comment. Yeah. Random thing. Um, Alexander and Tarina, City Schools is doing some survey right now about updating their facilities master plan. Oh. And you might want to look into it because my son, who's at Santa Rosa High, says there's some plan to pull out a bunch of the portables at Santa Rosa High to increase a either parking or a car drop-off area. So this could have circulation impacts. Hmm. It might also be an opportunity to do good things. The facilities master plan? I believe it is a facilities master plan. I'll see if I can find a link to some email when I get home. Okay. And it's going to be approved pretty soon, I think. Okay, yeah, they're, I've been they're, ignoring they're it. Closing in, because I was at one of those. Okay, I was ignoring it until my son said something about drop off. This would be right <laughs> to the area where he currently rides his bike. I mean, so I, we do the Safe Routes to School Task Force meetings. I can bring it up to, to Patty because she's the representative from that school district. Okay. It, yeah, it's probably going to take pushing it more than one angle. Yeah, but it'd be good to know, like, uh, maybe we need to start having something in our Safe Routes to School Task Force meeting. They, they're supposed to give us, like, updates themselves, mm -hmm. but it's good to hear from you so that we can know, because, yeah, then I can probe a little bit, and then okay. we can kind of try to connect, even though, they're, right, it's not our jurisdiction over schools. They can kind of do as they please without much input from the city. Right. But you can help squawk about yeah. the yeah, totally. bike riding experience to the school is terrible. Okay. Staff announcements? Who wants to go first? Um, slurry update was one, which I already did. Um, the next one was I wanted to let you know what grants we've been tracking recently. Um, so we've submitted four letters of interest. Um, two of them were for MTC. They have a um, active transportation technical assistance program. So I think it was a month ago, I submitted two letters of interest. Um, one of them to help with actual technical assistance for um, in the Oakmont area, there's a non ADA bridge um, that will need to be replaced at some point. And the other one was for purchasing of approximately 38 or 2,800 bollards. <laughs> so um, I have a really good feeling about the bollards, unknown about El Noca, the, the Oakmont area. Um, we also have, uh, we submitted a letter of interest to People for Bikes for their industry community grant. Um, that would be to purchase bollards for the portion of Third Street under the Plaza Mall, the undercrossing between B and Morgan. Um, we did initially get told that we were invited to submit a formal application, but then I talked to them further and they said, actually, never mind. So we did not get that one, unfortunately. Um, and then we also submitted a letter of interest for thriving communities, and that's under the U.S. Department of Transportation. And for that project, we're asking for three years of technical assistance to help um, 
create a low stress link between Prince Memorial Greenway and the future Southeast Greenway mm -hmm. site. Cause it's our hope that at some point we have a full East West, um, mm -hmm. fully low stress, all ages and abilities link. So I will have more updates in the future. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I just went to a couple of webinars today that were pretty, pretty awesome. Um, one was the MTC's Active Transportation Working Group. And in that, uh, they talked about GSI moderate infrastructure and pairing that with uh, class four bike lanes. So adding like nice. a be beautified protection in a sense, right? Through stormwater mitigation mm -hmm. practices, right? By adding, you know, by retention or whatever as your buffer instead of just bollards or something like that. Mm -hmm. So we're already starting talks with uh, folks from our stormwater um, division, and we're going to see if maybe there's grants we can go for in the future to, yeah. to help with that. Because in my mind, the class fours with the bollards is just the first step, and it's a temporary thing. Which leads me to the next topic and webinar that I was in was the active transportation um, Planning grant or not? No, oh, active transportation plan um, grant. Um, is that what it's called? ATP. The ATP grant. Yeah. I'll just leave it at that. Um, and they have a section in there for uh, quick builds. And so a lot of that, um, what they were talking about, I was like, oh, they had like seven million dollars <coughs> last year, and all of it wasn't allocated. So I think there's potential there for us to do the quick build stuff. But they also mentioned that it should be a temporary measure and mm -hmm. that, that in the future you should have more of a permanent structure and that's what they're looking for in the application it's the foresight to think about that in the future and to do like really good community engagement of you know before you before you put something out ask the public then after you put it out also ask the public and then get counts and things like that to, to emphasize the importance of the Thank you, Alex. I'm really excited today. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds exciting. I have, a, I have one quick item, um, and it's related to the slurry project. So if you remember, as part of the slurry project, we were in, intended to um, lower a lot of the speed limits in the downtown in conjunction with that project. We are, unless I hear otherwise, we are going to go ahead and just move forward with lowering the speed limits now instead of waiting for the project because of the lag. And, in time so we already have council approval to do that so we were just waiting for the project because since this was delayed we're going to move forward that so lowering the speed limit by five miles an hour or? so yeah a lot of the streets will be uh, lowered by five miles an hour that's related to the ab43 um bill that was passed okay so it, in, it allows us now in the downtown um and central business districts to do that um there's like four criteria have to pass it to do it um, so we already mapped out in the downtown that area so we can do that. And then in July of 24, we'll be able to do that throughout the rest of the city on qualified roadways. Yeah. Great. That helps. And then one more thing you said I could mention this, right? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> 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 we're, we're, trying to, <laughs> we're trying to have a, like a budget line item for uh, class four. So like, Budgeting out for class force. Oh. Nice. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Lots of great news. So either to, either to help us get grants that are for I mean to have, for matching, matching funds for grants us. or for mm -hmm. projects themselves. So we're strategizing a little ahead of ourselves. Yeah, it turns out it costs the same amount as bollards to implement them. So if you are <laughs> you need to buy ten thousand dollars bollards, it costs ten thousand dollars to install them. <laughs> wow. wow. Mm -hmm. So it's really expensive. Hmm. Sort of related to that, you've got counters out on Armory? Well, they're not out there anymore. I okay. I pulled them. I figured the weather is changing. And then trying to come out again in spring. Okay. We had some hiccups with that, so we weren't getting counts out there. So they're out there mm. for almost a month, but we probably only got like a week and a half worth of counts. Mm. Okay. But they'll, they'll go out again. Okay. Can I ask a question about Armory? Sure. I just want to... So I do ride there, Dwayne. I've never been there when you were there, but I, I do ride there. And I have noticed that it seems to me the cars are going a lot slower. So I was wondering if as part of counting the bikes, you would 
also be doing some speed um, monitoring because that was. Yeah, but I emailed you about oh, that this morning, and I did not I coordinate in any way. No, no. I, 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 no. <laughs> so it's yeah. We, yeah. Actually, we, we I've talked with uh, Mike, who does all of our mm -hmm. scheduling for our our surveys, and we're gonna we'll that stuff. Okay. Anything else? Mm -hmm. I'd like to say something also. US EPA has grant monies through the stormwater approach. Mm -hmm. And I believe the folks should look at not just them, but also the US Department of uh, Natural Resources. So there's money out there. It's just a matter of getting staff time to be able to look for some of these extras. We're trying, man. We're trying. To Thank you, Dwayne. volunteer. <laughs> <laughs> serious. He I said, got send time. info my way. I'm give you my card. Here, you can just write your email in here, bro. Okay. okay. With that, it is now 545, and the meeting is adjourned. Right Thank you all. And our next meeting is January? Correct. Yes. You're looking forward to that January deadline, aren't you? Already... No. Get rid of, get rid of